Okay, in this uh, video I'm going to go over all of the questions on your review classwork that we gave you on the very first day. Your directions say to show all work to answer each of the following questions. So make sure you show all work and we don't just have the answer. Okay. First uh, question says to simplify. That expression is a numerical expression in which we use the order of operations. In the order of operations, um, some of your teachers have may have shown you the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, or PEMDAS. That stands for your parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. And these operations you do left to right. Okay, so that's our checklist for question like number one. So number one, we do we don't have any parentheses, but we do have our exponents, but we do have multiplication and division. So this is nine plus twelve minus four. And combining those left to right, nine plus twelve as its addition and subtraction, twenty-one minus four is seventeen. Number two, we do have parentheses, so this is really a five. So this is negative 15 plus 25, which is 10. Is 5 squared is 25. Number three, we do have exponents and we have multiplication. So that's okay to do, um, not at the same time, but do the multiplication first and then the exponent as it's, as it's in the same step. What's most important is that we subtract last. 9 times 4 is 36, 11 squared, 121, subtract and we get negative 85. Number four says if a is equal to three and b is equal to four, find the value. So we are evaluating this algebraic expression. So we substitute the a with a negative three, and then the b with four into our order of operations. So this becomes a positive nine, so it's really negative five times nine times four, you can do it in any order as multiplication is commutative and you get negative 180. In number five, we're solving for x or trying to isolate x. So my answer should be x equals, as that's the variable. There's only one operation uh, that's happening here being done to the x. It's x minus three. In solving an equation, you work backwards or undo those operations in which you performed on the x. So to undo that subtraction of three, we add three and we get x equals 13. You can check by substituting the 13 in, and is 13 minus 3, 10? It is, so we know we're right. In number six, it's x divided by negative four, so we undo that division with multiplication. And negative four divided by negative four is one, so therefore x equals a positive 20. Seven has two steps. Those two steps are multiplication and subtraction. We always undo addition or subtraction first. So we start by adding 4. 2x is equal to 22. Divide by 2 to undo that product. And x is 11. Back to a numerical expression for number 8. This one's different, though, in that it has two parentheses. You always work with those innermost parentheses first. So when I subtract, we get negative 11. Now do the 4 minus negative 11, and this problem becomes negative 9 plus 3 times, and you subtract a negative, it turns positive, times 15. Multiplication before addition, this becomes negative 9 plus 45, which is 36. Number 9, if c equals 5 and d equals negative 2, find the value of this expression. So making the substitution, it's 7 minus 5 times negative 2 squared. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Negative 10 squared is 100. So 7 minus 100 is negative 93. Number 10, complete the table for that function. So f of x is equal to 2 times x plus 5. Remember your f of x notation. So I'm going to plug all these x's in here to find out what the f of x or really y is equal to. It means the same thing. So f of negative 2, f of negative 1, f of 1, and then f of 2. And I'm going to do these computations as I write them, or we can do them together aloud. 
So this is 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. So f of negative 2 is 1. Next one would be 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Negative 2 plus the 5 is equal to 3. So therefore, f of negative 1 is 3. Next one would be 2 times 1, which is 2. 2 plus 5 is 7. And then last, 2 times 2 plus 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. Solve for x. So we do have parentheses now. I need to remove parentheses using the distributive property. So 3 times x is 3x. And then don't forget the 3 times the 2 is 6. You can solve equations uh, many different ways. So you may solve it differently than myself. But I like to uh, perform the inverse operation so that I have a positive number of x's. So rather than subtracting 3x from both sides to get a negative 1x on the right, I subtracted the 2x to get a positive x on the left. x plus 6 equals 4, subtract 6, and x equals negative 2. Back side is all fractions. So pause the video for a moment and read that hint, and then when you're finished, you can go ahead and press play. So the common factor for 15 and 50, well, you should always check, does 15 go into 50? And it does not. So common factor is 5. 15 is 5 times 3. 50 is 5 times 10. Divide out the common factor and you get 3 tenths. And number 13, 7 is a factor of 42. So divide the numerator down by 7, we get 1 sixth. So 1 sixth is our answer. And 36 does not go into 48, but they both are divisible by 12. And 12 is the GCF. If you don't use the GCF, then you just have to reduce more than once. So 36 divided by 12 is 3, and 48 divided by 12 is 4, or 3 fourths. Okay? Next section, we have operations with fractions. So go ahead and pause so you can read that paragraph in the table and then press play when you're ready to continue. Okay, adding and subtracting. So these questions here, the first four. In order to add or subtract, you must have common denominators. The ones that do are 15 and 17. So the first thing you want to do is rewrite the denominator. That stays the same. And then you combine the numerator. 5 plus 3, 8. 32 minus 7 is 25. Once you do that, you go back and look. Can you reduce them? 8 ninths cannot be reduced. That's the answer. 25 25ths can be reduced. You can divide 25 by 25 and get 1. The other two, 16 and 18, need to have a common denominator. And we use the least common multiple. So in counting by 7s and counting by 21s, the least common multiple is the 21. And you can also check the 7 going to 21, it does. So I'm going to change the 7 to a 21 by multiplication. And whatever you do to one side, um, you have to do the other. So this is really 5 over 21 plus 15 over 21, which becomes 20 over 21. If I look at 20 over 21, we cannot reduce, so that is the final answer. 3 goes into 24 8 times, so if I multiply the 3 and the 12 by 8, we now have 8 24 minus 12 times 8 is 96 24 ths. Doing that subtraction, keeping the denominator the same, 8 minus 96 is a negative 88. You can see the 88 has two 8s, so 8 goes in there 11 times, and 8 also goes into 24. So reducing that, 8 goes in there 11 times, 3 times, our final answer is negative 11 thirds. The last uh, part, or the last five questions, deal with multiplication and division of fractions. Every division problem with fractions is really a multiplication problem because we do the keep, change the symbol, and then flip or invert the second fraction. So I'm going to do that first with all of the division problems, so then we have now all multiplication problems. So keep the 4 thirds, change to multiplication, flip 3 eighths becomes 8 thirds. Well, to keep this, 3 change, and then flip, 18 ninths, keep, 
change, flip five thirds becomes three fifths. Now we multiply, we multiply, we multiply straight across. So fifth, er, 13 times five is 65, six over 10 is 60. Reduce, they both have a common factor of five. Uh, five goes in there 13 times, five goes in there 12 times, so 13 twelfths. Multiplying here straight across, seven times eight, 56, four times three, 12 which can be reduced, four goes in there 14 times, four goes in there three times to 14 thirds. Now you'll arrive at that 14 thirds in another method. So seven fourths times eight thirds. And that's by looking at your diagonals. If the diagonals share a common factor, you can reduce ahead of time, and that way you won't have to reduce at the end. So four and eight have a common factor, four goes into itself once, and four goes into eight Twice. So 7 times 2 is 14, 1 times 3, 3, you can see we get the same thing. Looking at the diagonals here, though we can't do any cross canceling, so we're just going to multiply straight across and get 32 over 9, which can't be reduced. Here, um, if I put this over 1 to make it a fraction, 3 goes in 9, 3 times goes into itself once. Not only can you look at the diagonals, but you can also um, see that 3 goes into 18 6 times. So put the 1 there. Multiplying straight across, 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 1, 1. And 6 over 1 is 6. We can cross cancel here. So 3 goes into itself once, goes into 6 twice. We end up with 1 times 1, 1. And 2 times 5, 10 for 1 tenth.